On this specimen, I wanted to demonstrate the diencephalon in the context of the third ventricle, which is uh, practically located between the left and right diencephalon here. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom. Here we have a midline section of the whole brain with parts of it missing, obviously. So we can see the pons cut away and the whole mesencephalon is still present, but its anterior part which is called the pedunculus cerebri, white matter anterior here. And then we have the middle part, the tegmen of the mesencephalon, and the posterior part, the tectum of the mesencephalon, also called lamina quadrigemina, because it has the inferior and superior colliculi. Uh, between the tectum and the tegmen of the mesencephalon, we have the aqueductus cerebri, of Silvius, which is a communication between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle down here. Then uh, this aqueductus cerebri continues organically in this groove on the lateral wall of the third ventricle, which we call sulcus hypothalamicus. And the sulcus hypothalamicus meets an opening through which we can communicate with the lateral ventricle of the hemisphere. This is called foramen interventriculare of Monroe, and we have another one on the other side as well. This sulcus hypothalamicus separates the lateral, uh, I mean the medial surface of the hip of the um, uh, diencephalon into a superior posterior area, which is the thalamus, or corresponds to the thalamus, and an anterior inferior area, which corresponds to the hypothalamus. Um, Thalamic structures visible on this uh, lateral wall are obviously this cut surface, which we call adhesio interthalamica. It's, the, can, it's a gray bridge connection between the two uh, left and right thalamus. And on the upper part, we have this band of uh, white matter, the stria medullaris thalami, or tenia thalami as well, uh, which is a connection towards the epithalamus. Then, um, inferiorly, in the hypothalamic area, we kind of have the whole hypothalamus is lateral uh, medial, medial wall present here. And on the outer surface, the hypothalamic structures will represent the inferior wall of the third ventricle. So we will have the corpus mammillare behind, tuber cinereum, uh, gray proeminence, protuberance, going towards the uh, hypophysis with the hypophysial stalk right here at this point. And then we also have the tractus opticus bounding it from the side uh, as it was uh, going posteriorly from the chiasma opticum that is cut here. So this in fact is the inferior wall of the third ventricle. Now if we go on and uh, see the anterior wall of the third ventricle, we'll see here the lamina terminalis, which is a thin plate of white matter, uh, continued upward into this cross section, the uh, commissura anterior, which is a large dish fiber bundle between the uh, two halves of the rhinencephalon, and then a white matter bundle, uh, which we call the fornix. The fornix here has the visible parts of the fornix on this specimen are the corpus fornices up here under corpus callosum and as it turns downwards it becomes the columna of the fornix, columna fornices. Columna fornices uh, splits into two uh, behind and uh, anterior to the commissura anterior. So this is the pars postcommissuralis and this is the pars precommissuralis of the fornix. The postcommissural part will head towards the mammillary body, uh, passing into the hypothalamic tissue. Uh, the part that is still visible is called the pars libera, and the one that passes through the hypothalamus is called the pars tecta of the postcommissural fornix. Now, as you can see here, the lamina terminalis of the anterior wall continues into a huge interhemispheric connection, which we call the uh, corpus callosum, which has a the following parts here. We have a thin component, rostrum corporis callosi, the beak, then thickened out, turning backwards, the genu of the corpus callosum, then truncus corporis callosi, and splenium 
corporis callosi, the posterior biggest, bulkiest part of the corpus callosum. Between the corpus callosum and the fornix, we have a thin membrane which separates the anterior parts of the lateral ventricles, which we call the septum pellucidum right here. Um, so we talked about the anterior wall, the superior wall, uh, width of the third ventricle, which is in fact the uh, tela choroidea of the third ventricle, which is missing from here, and it attaches its plexus choroideus to this stria medullaris thalami, also missing from here. And then uh, we just mentioned parts of the posterior wall of the third ventricle, which here is also cut. Uh, we have this remnant of connection, which is the commissura posterior, and it was going into the pineal gland uh, with uh, the superior part as well, not there. Now, uh, the third ventricle has um, recesses, has um, blind and openings or blind um, endings, uh, on its different walls, so we're gonna talk about them briefly. Anteriorly, we have the supra uh, commissura or triangular recess, uh, recessus triangularis, which is between the colum columns of the fornix and the superior part of commissura anterior. Then, right above the optic chiasm, which is here, we have the supra optic recess, and then in the Tuga cinereum, which is narrowing down into a structure called infundibulum, we will have the infundibular recess, recess recessus infundibularis. And posteriorly, we have two the pineal and suprapineal recesses, uh, recessus pinealis and recessus suprapinealis, but both of them are not entirely represented on this specimen. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention in this regard is this gap between the corpus callosum fornix complex and the superior surface of the thalamus here. This is the transverse fissure of the brain, the anterior part of the transverse fissure of the brain of Bichat, fissura transversa cerebri, or the telodiencephalic fissure, separating the diencephalon from the telencephalon. So after this, uh, Longer explanation, I will just have a short, brief overview of the structures we just uh, discussed. So, here we have the pedunculus cerebri, uh, tectum mesencephalicum, or lamina quadrigemina, uh, colliculus superior, colliculus inferior, aqueductus cerebri of Silvius, sulcus hypothalamicus, foramen interventriculare of Monroe, with plexus choroideus in it, Thalamus, adhesio interthalamica, stria medullaris thalami, hypothalamus, corpus mammillare, infundibulum, also recessus infundibuli, tuber cinereum outside here, tractus opticus next to it, recessus supraopticus here, commissura anterior, Lamina terminalis, recessus triangularis, columna fornicis, corpus fornicis, septum pellucidum, rostrum corporis callosi, genu corporis callosi, truncus corporis callosi, and splenium corporis callosi. Eventually, we, we close it off with the uh, fissura transversa cerebri of Bichat.